Hello everyone, I hope your day is just going great. Today we're going to talk about uh, lightening the load a little bit. Some palettes that I've kind of gone through my drawers and decided I would get rid of. And I thought, well, hey, let's just turn on the camera and maybe chat about some of these things. I think it's interesting to see what people are letting go of in their collection and the reasons why. And sometimes it's like an embarrassingly simple reason, like I just do not see a future with this product. Like I just don't think I'm going to get used out of it. Sometimes it's just the practical reason of it's old. I'm not going to even pass this on to anybody like it's old. Maybe it was just overall unimpressive quality or it just can't stand out among other things that I have that are doing that and then some, you know. I think you're going to find that we've all been there with our thoughts on some level with different products. And just looking through my collection, trying to get things straightened up, you take a good look at it and you're like, this is taking up a lot of space. Some of this needs to move on, right? We're going to start off here with a good vintage. <laughs> um, uh, anybody remember? this. This is so old, this Too Faced Love palette. This has been around a long time. I remember having it back when we were living in the other house. This is the Love palette from Too Faced. There is an eyeliner still in it, and it's like these three little groupings of colors, and it's not a bad palette. It's got a lot of shimmer in it, but it's one of those things where I found it way at the bottom. I'm like, why do I keep holding on to this? Then I really look closely at it, and I'm like, I think every single shade in here has shimmer and a certain percentage of them it's like a flaky kind of dusty shimmer so this one I think needs to go and it's probably so old that it shouldn't go to anyone else and by the way what do you guys like to do with stuff that you cast aside if I've got things that have never been used or swatched or touched in any way it's within the health codes where I live where I can donate that to homeless shelters women's centers I might include like unused PR stuff in gift baskets for different charitable organizations I get approached to do that a lot if there are things that I know have been used but they're not that old and they're very much usable still. I might offer that up to friends and family. And then there's Project Beauty Share where certain things that you would donate need to be new, but some things they will sanitize and distribute to people who need them. So if you do have product on hand that you want to get rid of, um, you might do a little digging locally and see what local centers, women's centers, homeless shelters will accept. And then like I said, Project Beauty Share is another opportunity or just people you know who might be interested in some of the makeup you've had on hand. But here's another one that I'm letting go of this Life's a Festival from Too Faced. I mean, it's kind of a really bulky, large palette, and it's not that old, and it hasn't been used that hard, but I just feel like I'm done with it, you know? It's not something that I'm feeling is extremely relevant in what I'm talking about these days. I'm not sure that it's even still available, but it does have some fun pops in here for somebody who's wanting to play with color. I think as a freestanding palette, I probably critiqued it a little bit in not having a lot of dark shades to really balance out all the bright and light light, but I think, yeah, it's time has come. It's going to go bye-bye. Also, my Urban Decay Moon Dust. I know this is a pretty palette. Like, if you swatch these shades out, you're like, wow, you know, they're so metallic. They're so sparkly. I feel like I have kept this on hand repeatedly through multiple sessions of declutters and looking through my drawers, and it's hung around and hung around, but it has not actually proven itself to me that I need this still. To me, it must be something with my mentality, but having all these shades all together in one palette. Somehow I don't even think to approach it, you know, like if maybe these different colors were sprinkled throughout a more balanced palette that was not 100% really glittery, sparkly shimmer, maybe I'd be more drawn to using shades like that. But I do think I might have some people in my life who could take advantage of that and have some fun with it. Also, sometimes I see things in my collection that are so barely used and so just like maybe swatched, maybe used just once or twice, and they seem so fresh, and it's like I could really see this being someone else's palette, and I feel that way about this Urban Decay Distortion palette. It is so clean and nice, and it does provide some balance, actually. I mean, I see deeper shades, I see mid-tones, I see all these different colors. It's the idea that you have some sort of morphing light colors that could be used and layered up on top of some of the deeper ones, and you could get different looks. And I've got some family members who are really involved in, like, makeup and theater and having fun with stuff like that, and I just think she'd have a ball with that. Here's something that I think has probably been around a little too long in my collection. It's the Smashbox Double Exposure Palette, and this really does seem to have gotten some use, but I look closely at some of the shades, especially some of these mattes down here, and I see kind of a color shift, and to touch them, like the texture is not uniformly the same. So I'm just kind of feeling like this palette, sadly, has sort of reached the end of its lifespan, but some of these colors have really been used. There are
are some pretty purples, some rich shades, some very classic neutrals. But again, just to do a little light swatching here, the textures are not what I really remember them to be, so I'm gonna let that go. Now here's a newer one from Smashbox that I have fully experimented with, but I feel like I'm not really needing it myself, so I'll pass it on. But it's kind of that idea of mixing quads together, and I felt like there was a lot of kind of repeat color in here with these light shades that take up kind of a lot of space in the palette. It's not a bad palette, it's some nice pigmentation. It's just not the kind of thing that's gonna like draw itself back into my makeup routine at all times. Smoky Nights from Estee Lauder. I wasn't really over the moon for the textures in here. I think there are some really pretty greenish tones, but beyond that, like I don't feel like there's much else really driving me to use this palette. It almost reminds me of that double exposure when I just held up for Smashbox. It's got some earthy shades, it's got some cooler shades. It's like, okay, thank you for the balance. It's given me some good looks, but I'm just ready to move on because I'm not reaching for it. Here's a palette from Tarte that, again, this is one of those situations where I've seen it multiple times. It's cycled through many declutters, and I've decided, yes, I need to keep that. I need to use that. But you know what? I don't think this has even been swatched. It's so new, and so I see that, and it's starting to pain me, you know, that that has not been swatched and used because it looks so wearable. I think of so many people who would get good out of this. This is a well-balanced palette. Light, medium, and dark is all there. Great for everyday natural looks. There was like another version of the Maneater palette that I definitely had used, and the colors were soft and nice and kind of that tartlet or tartlet and bloom type texture that a lot of people enjoy. So I feel like somebody might go on to absolutely love this thing and I think it's time to just give it up and kind of give up hope that that person's going to be me because I think it should be someone else. Here's another palette from Tarte that's just been barely used and you know the problem here is that I talk about this now, nobody else has any access to this. I don't know how many people out there like snagged this at some point. It's really cute how there's flamingos on it. They're pretty shades. This particular palette is just not so relevant right now. Again, I'm not sure where a person could get their hands on it, but it seems like something that could suit a lot of different people that I might be able to hand this off to, you know? Beautiful for a warm toned eyeshadow lover. Okay, NARS and their Atomic Blonde palette. I mean, you've got a big, dark, deep contour here, a highlight light and four eyeshadows. Now you all know I can respect some multitasking, but I feel like these tones are about as basic as can be. I remembered a couple of these being pretty flaky and not the easiest to work with and build up on the eyes. So it's one of those things where I feel like, yeah, I've given it its shot and it just can't hang with the other things that I already have that I really, really like. Two other Tarte palettes that are really relatively new. I've got the Lost in Luster face palette and the Wild Thing face palette. I love the bright bright, vivid packaging. But it is funny how NARS will sometimes, like on the outside, their palettes look so exciting, and on the inside, I mean, this is what we're working with. This one's Lost in Luster, this one is Wild Thing. I remember really giving this one a shot, um, getting just a very light, kind of barely their eye look without much contrast at all, which is sometimes what some people want. That was definitely revealed to me in the Get Ready With Me where I used that It Girl palette, and some people are like, ugh those shadows are so boring and then other people are like that's exactly what I want you know so I, I understand that the preferences may be out there for something that is just barely their lightness um, so that might be a palette somebody out there really is going to love I really liked the face elements in both of these but I felt like the underwhelming shadows were kind of just weighing it down for me and keeping it from being something really exciting that I was really wanting to use a lot and then three palettes here from LA Colors I gave these all a shot, and I think they're all like kind of pretty palettes, but it's again one of those situations where I feel like I'm flooded with stuff. Given my light amount of use on these, I feel like they could be nearly new for someone else. But this is the Socialite palette. We've got Socialite, After Party, and Invite Only. And what kind of bugged me about this is like there's two textures. If it's metallic or shiny looking at all, like that's one of them, and then there's matte. But there's no variation in the metallics. Like they're just very, very all out, really shiny, just super metallic colors. There's not a softer one. There's not a satin. It's just either going 100 or it's matte. So yeah, you can achieve some looks with that. But also on top of it all, the palette was way bigger than it needed to be. There's a lot of really close shades in here that are darn near 
overlapping one another like so so close so for those reasons it's not a palette that's really drawing me in and exciting me and then on top of it my light amount of use makes me think it could be a great palette for someone else you know a nearly new thing here's the one called invite only this one offers a little cooler spread I look at it and I kind of think naked palette vibes because of some of the um, kind of warmer champagne -y colors some bronzes and then some cooler charcoals happening there but it's just kind of funny to me how it's like one of two textures either it's fully matte or it's really really metallic but the overall color scheme that was really most appealing to me I thought this one was fun the after party palette because I really liked these cool kind of unusual unique purples and then the berries and then you do have some mattes to balance it so to speak you can create some pretty pigmented looks but there is some close overlap in here it's not like a palette that I'm going to shout from the rooftops and say everyone needs this this is a total recommend a hidden gem the looks always amount to kind of this matte buffed out crease and then the kind of metallic color that you're going to be like swiping over building up across your lid and it's like that's its place there's not a lot of in between but guys those are the palettes I'm getting rid of right now a lot of varied looks and brands and maybe some of the logic I used here will go through your mind as you're looking through your collection and decluttering it at times and here's a question for you in the comments section what do you feel like is the hardest to let go of kind of product in your collection to me I mean palettes are kind of hard for me to let go of it's genuinely a type of makeup that really draws me in I find myself like finding reasons to keep certain ones as I've said they've survived multiple declutters but they're still around and now I've just kind of gotten real enough with myself to say let's shed it let's let it go let's give it to somebody else and that idea makes me happy that somebody else might get use out of it and it could be a brand new or nearly brand new thing to them so anyway guys I hope this was fun thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon bye